Hello, my name is Melissa Manus, and I'm here to read my multicultural book to you guys. Uh, I chose this book because I really related to it um, in some ways, not in every way. But um, it's a book about music, um, about a, a boy who was inspired by music and kept being encouraged and eventually became one of the best trombone players jazz-wise for jazz music out there. Um, I related because I played piano. I've always wanted to play piano. Um, I started taking lessons very young. And while I don't play like I used to, I still play. I still enjoy it. It's one of my passions. Um, but for this kid in this book, it it grew. And, and that's what I would tell kids um, if I had a classroom. And for instruction, I would show them how even the littlest thing that you're inspired by it doesn't matter what it is, if it's art, music, being a doctor, being, you know, uh, <laughs> a Walmart employee, anything, whatever you're inspired by, whatever you want to be, you can be. And, and, and with enough inspiration, enough um, gumption, enough, um, you know, desire to do anything, you can do anything you want to do. Anybody can do anything that they want to do. So that's what I would tell kids, um, and the importance of, of following your dreams and, and, and doing what you feel like you want to do, you know. And sometimes it always doesn't always pan out, but a lot of times if you're inspired enough and really want to do something, it will pan out, and it will work out in your favor. So um, the book that I chose is called Trombone Shorty. Um, this is a true story. Uh, this person really you know, lived, really did do these things in this book, um, and I believe it was written by him, so it's coming from his own mouth. Um, it was written by Troy Andrews, um, or Troy Trombone Shorty Andrews. Um, it was illustrated illustrated by Brian Collier, and it was published in 2015 by Adam Abrams Books for Young Readers. So, um, I will read this to you. Um, is is such a good book. I mean, it's 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 about jazz music. It's about the South. Um, I didn't know too much about a lot of. I mean, it's not something I'm super. Um, I don't know a lot, whole lot about the South, about you know New Orleans stuff down there. Uh, but I did relate to this, and and it is a good book to me. So, without further ado, let's read this book, Trombone Shorty. So, same page. So here we go. Where ya? Where ya? We have our own way of living down here in New Orleans, and our own way of talking too. And that's what we like to say when we want to tell a friend hello. So, where ya? Lots of kids have nicknames, but I want to tell you the story of how I got mine. Just like when you listen to your favorite song, let's start at the beginning, because this story is about music. But before you can understand how much music means to me, you have to know how important it is to my hometown, my greatest inspiration. I grew up in a neighborhood in New Orleans called Treme. Any time of day or night, you could hear music floating in the air. And there was my music in my house, too. My big brother, James, played the trumpet so loud you could hear him halfway across town. He was the leader of his own band, and my friends and I would pretend to be in the band, too. Follow me, James would say. There's one time every year that's more exciting than any other, Mardi Gras. Parades fill the streets and beaded necklaces are thrown, into the, thrown through the air to the crowd. I loved the brass bands with their own trumpets, trombones, saxophones, and the biggest brass instrument of them all, the tuba which rested over the musician's, musician's head like an elephant's trunk. Where are you at? Where are you at? The musicians would call. All day long, I could see brass bands parade by my house while my neighbors danced along. I loved these parades during Mardi Gras because they made everyone forget about their troubles for a little while. People didn't have a lot of, of money in Treme, but we always had a lot of music. I listened to all these sounds and mixed them together, just like how we make our food. We take one big pot and throw in sausage, crab, shrimp, chicken, vegetables, rice, whatever's in the kitchen, 
and stir it all together and let it cook. When it's done, it's the most delicious taste you've ever tried. We call it gumbo, and that's what I want my music to sound like. Different styles combined to create my own musical gumbo. But first, I needed an instrument. The great thing about music is that you don't even need a real instrument to play. So my friends and I decided to make our own. We might have sounded different from the real brass bands, but we felt like the greatest musicians of Treme. We were making music, and that's all that mattered. Then one day, I found a broken trombone that looked too beaten up to make music anymore. It didn't sound perfect, but finally, with a real instrument in my hand, I was ready to play. The next time the parade went by my house, I grabbed that trombone and headed out into the street. My brother James noticed me playing along and smiled proudly. Trombone shorty, he called out, because the instrument was twice my size. Where are you at? From that day on, everyone called me Trombone Shorty. I took that trombone everywhere I went and never stopped playing. I was so small that sometimes I fell right over to the ground because it was so heavy. But I always got back up and I learned to hold it up high. I listened to my brother play songs over and over and I taught myself those songs too. I practiced day and night and sometimes I fell asleep with my trombone in my hands. One day, my mom surprised me with tickets to the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival, the best and biggest music festival in town. We went to see Bo Diddley, who my mom said was one of the most important musicians of all time. As I watched him on stage, I raised my trombone to my lips and started to play along. He stopped his band in the middle of the song and asked the crowd, Who's that playing out there? Everyone started pointing, but Bo Diddley couldn't see me because I was the smallest one in the place. So my mom held me up in the air and said, That's my son, Trombone Shorty. Well, Trombone Shorty, come on up here, Bo Diddley said. The crowd passed me overhead until I was standing on the stage next to Bo Diddley himself. I walked right up to the microphone and held my trombone high up in the air, ready to blow. What do you want me to play, Bo Diddley asked. Follow me, I said. After I played with Bo Diddley, I knew I was ready to have my own band. I got my friends together and we called ourselves the Five O'Clock Band because that was the time we went out to play each day after finishing our homework. We played all around New Orleans. I practiced and practiced, and soon my brother James asked me to join his band. When people wondered who the kid in the band was, he proudly, he'd proudly say, That's my little brother, Trombone Shorty. Where you at? And now I have my own band called Trombone Shorty and Orleans Avenue, named after a street in Treme. I played all around the world, but I also I always come back to New Orleans. And when I'm home, I make sure to keep my eyes on the younger musicians in town and help them out, just like my brother did for me. Today I play at the same New Orleans Jazz Festival festival where I pl once played with Bo Diddley. And when the performance ends, I lead a parade of musicians around, just like I used to do in the streets of Treme with my friends. Where are you at? Where are you at? And this is just showing his real pictures about his real life. And showing a picture of himself at the end. So as you can see, it is a very inspiring book. And it shows that you can do anything you want with enough, um, enough passion and enough... Um, want to you can do anything you want and his passion was music and that's what that's what got him through his young years and that's what gave him joy so that's that's something I would tell my students and that's what I would focus on is just you can do anything you want so that's it I hope you enjoyed that book as much as I did and we'll see you next time